Hey there folks, Gary Bradley from Creative Frontiers here and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a slideshow inside of InDesign. And uh, when I say slideshow, obviously I'm talking about an interactive document that you view on screen or a device. And in terms of the feature, this is called a multi-state object inside of InDesign. And to be clear, a multi-state object, its feature can be uh, included in export for fixed layout EPUB and for publish online. It is sadly one of the features that isn't currently available to use and export inside of an interactive PDF, despite the name interactive PDF. Um, so it is possible through output to uh, to EPO, fixed layout and publish online. I will show you the finished version uh, once I've published to, to online uh, at the end of the video so you can see exactly what it looks like. But from here, the first stage that I need then is I'm going to bring in six images. I'm going to arrange them on the page inside of here. And we're then going to use a button to be able to go to the previous um, state and to the next state in the in the kind of the, the slideshow in, in effect. So first things first, I've got my uh, images layer active in the layers panel in here. I'm then going to go across to the file menu and I'm going to choose place. I'm going to go straight to the desktop and then go to my images folder and then bring in all of these six images in here. I'll click on open and it, it does help, of course, if we've got a slideshow, if all the images are the same orientation, it wouldn't look so good um, if they are different orientations and different sizes. So I have inside of Photoshop set these up so they're all exactly the same width and height. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, in a clear space over here, at a, one at a time, I'm going to left click and deposit them onto the document page in here so that I have all six of my images. I can then very quickly with my selection tool click and drag over the top corners of them to have them selected. And then from the properties panel or the control panel, whichever you prefer, um, I will make sure that my alignment mode in here is set to align to page. And then I'm going to align to the left hand side of the page like so. And then I'll choose to align to the top of the page in there. Uh, my image is a little bit tall on the page in here, so I'm going to use the cursor keys and the keyboard just to nudge up ever so slightly and just center them a little bit. And also, I want to make sure that I have a little bit of overlap on the uh, top and bottom of the page in there. It's not, nothing to do with multi-state object. It just it makes me happy to see things aligned nice and neatly. Uh, nothing more, really. So out of all the images, all six selected, only one of them clearly at the moment is visible. And this is one of the the beauties of um, having an interactive document and we can use the same space on screen and then we can just change the appearance of which our image is visible at any one time. So now they are sat there on my layout all lined perfectly. I can then go to the window menu, go down to interactive and then in the interactive sub menu I can choose what's called object states. Now again it, this feature is referred to as multi-state objects but the panel itself is called object states and if I left click on there it opens up and then inside of here you'll see that it reads um, click the new button to make each object a separate state or you can in fact make all of the selected objects one state now in this case we want to create a slideshow and of all of these six images so I will just simply go down to the newer button in there and click on that to create a new multi-state object I'm going to extend the panel down so we can see all six states. And as you can see, and as it predicted, each of those images now is a separate state. The name of the object in here is just given generic names. So I'm going to call this slideshow, uh, marginally less generic. And then from here, we need to add the interactivity. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my panel to the side. I'm then going to lock my images. And then I'm going to turn on the layer for interactive. And if you watch one of my previous videos, you'll, you've seen in here that we created a rollover and some page jumps with the uh, icons at the top of the screen in here. My focus is going to be down at the bottom left hand side of the page in here. So I'm going to zoom in. Again, I have very similar to the video that I've just mentioned, uh, a simple rectangle and a, a line all drawn inside of InDesign in here. And then I'm going to switch to my selection tool. I just make sure that I have locked my images layer, so I can't click on those, but I can certainly interact with the rectangle and the line in here. Now, I'm going to click and drag across those two to select them and go to object and then choose group. I'm going to go back to the window menu, back to interactive and then choose buttons and forms. Drag this just to the side. Now I'm going to turn this into a button. So I'll click on the drop down menu and choose button. 
give that a name and I'll call this previous image. And then um, also I will then add an action to this so that when someone taps with the finger on a, on a screen device or clicks with the mouse, it will then go to previous state. You'll notice that then when I've chosen go to previous state, it detects which multi-state objects are active on this page in here. And as there is only one, it's automatically picked that for us. And it's given us there in parentheses, the name slideshow, which is the name that I gave to those selected six images for our particular multi-state object. So the checkbox in here, stop at first state is because we've chosen uh, in here to go to the previous state in the particular multi-state object. What this is trying to do is give you the option of stopping the end user from just continuously scrolling through the same images all over again. So if you prefer the end user, when they keep clicking on this button, once they reach the first state, it stops. They then should realize that they've gone right back to the beginning of all of those different images in the slideshow. If it's not turned on, then the end user, when they come to click on the button, can keep clicking and they'll just keep going through a complete loop uh, and saying, seeing the same images over and over again. And they might at some point realize they've seen the same image before. So since it's up to you, um, I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to turn that on and then we have to go to the appearance. So when this uh, interactive document appears on screen, the button here will have a white outline uh, and the arrow will be white. But when we roll over that, it will be nice to change the appearance. So I'll click on roll over. I'll then hover my cursor over the group and double left click. And then with just the rectangle selected, I'm going to go over to my appearance options in the properties panel and click in here, and then I'll change the fill color to green, something that will be nice and noticeable uh, when the, the cursor hovers over that. And I'll press return to make the pop pop disappear. Having made the first one, then I can move my panels just to the side in here and then move this one over here. Now I'll click away and then click back on the group in there just to show you that um, I almost made the mistake then of not resetting that button in there. So if I click back on normal, when the EPUB opens up, it will appear that button in whatever state is set in here, whether it be normal or over. And we really need to reset that in there. So having done that, and then I'm going to hover over there, hold down the Alt key to get the duplicate symbol, Alt click and drag, let go of the mouse, let go of the Alt key. And that creates an exact copy of the original. Um, first and foremost, though, what I will do is I'll go into the buttons and forms panel and then I'll change the name in here. And I'm just going to remove the one off the end and then change that to next image. I will then need to hover my cursor on the outside, just on the corner in there to get the rotate symbol. Click and hold down the mouse, then hold down the shift key. I'm going to rotate that round 180 degrees in there. So the arrow points in the opposite direction. Um, that could also be done in the properties panel, the control panel. There's a uh, in here, there's a transform, which you'd have to set pinned to the middle in there. So it rotates around its center and you can choose to rotate in clockwise or counterclockwise directions in there. If you didn't want to do it with the mouse, having got that in position in there, it's going to move that back a little bit. So they're closer together. And then in this case, I need to remove that state. I want it to go to the previous state. I'll remove that one. Click OK. And then I'll click on the action in there and choose to go to next state. Again, it automatically picks slideshow, the multi-state object we made. And then I will choose to stop at last state. So it's the opposite of what it did this time. When we reach the end image, then it will stop. And um, the end user knows they've reached the end of the carousel of images. So with that done, you'll notice that the rollover that I made in the original is still in there. So it, it doesn't half the work you have to do in there, but it does reduce a little bit of that work. If you create one button and then the properties are almost identical, you can create a duplicate and rename and change the, the, the action in there. So with that done, um, well, down at the bottom of the buttons and forms panel, I have uh, the play button in here. Um, that will take me to the EPUB preview, which pops up and on screen. This is usually a little bit smaller. Um, so you might find that you can drag and make this bigger. Um, it, probably pops up on screen about that sort of size. So you can just hover your cursor over the corner and then drag that out. And this is uh, quite literally a preview of that page with its interactivity on. So if I hover my cursor over here, you can see that the uh, rollover works. I can then choose to click back, click forward, and it will cycle through those images. And when I reach the very last image in here, it stops when I keep clicking on that. And then conversely, I can go back and hover over the first button we made and click and go back to the first one. And you'll notice as I keep clicking on there, 
it doesn't keep looping back round. So that's what the checkbox was for. So that's all good. Uh, it's a nice way of able to include several images on one page, make them nice and big, um, and then we can utilize the interactive properties. So I'm going to go and close the EPUB interactivity preview. I'll close down these panels as well. Go to view and then choose fit page and window. And then from here, I'll go up to the top to publish online. And then from here, I will choose to update an existing document. I published one earlier, which is called uh, Soul System Issue 23. And it will replace the one that I've um, uploaded previously in there. And with that done, then the title in there, Soul System Issue 23, you could put a description in there. I'm going to choose to export all of the pages for this. Um, I will n then not choose to allow the viewers to download a another PDF version of this, which would be a, a copy, a print quality version. This is only meant for screen viewing. And then under hide and share embed options, I don't want to hide those. I won't be able to share it and share the goodness. I'll click on the advanced tab in here just to show that you could create your own cover. Um, and then under resolution, I'll set this to the standard of 96 PPI. So a, a standard screen definition, you could change that to 144 PPI for a higher screen quality in there but i will leave that set to standard uh, just so that it's quicker for us to publish this uh during the video and then i'll click on publish are you sure you wish to update the link yes i do want to replace the one that i've uploaded already and then um it goes through the process of taking all the data in this file uploading it onto adobe servers where it's hosted and then uh, i have another screen which tells me that all that data has been uploaded And there we go. It's been done. So if I go down here now and click on view document, I'm going to go to the thumbnails down at the bottom and then navigate to our page with the thumbnails in there and our slideshow. And you'll see here that we can cycle through. So this is publish online. All the end user would need is a web browser to be able to view this. And then you can distribute it a lot quicker um, rather than emailing or providing a link. So um, that's how you can create a slideshow inside of InDesign, folks. It will be uh, available to export with uh, uh, EPUB fixed layout or publish online direct from inside of Adobe InDesign. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up to help the channel. You can always subscribe and you can click on the bell next to subscribe. And then every time I put a video out here on the channel on a Friday at half past 12 at GMT time, then you'll get a notification to say that I have published something hopefully interesting and of value. Until next time, friends, farewell.